Hi, this is the second video uh, how to use bitmaps in Screen Designer 4. Um, when I use the term bitmaps, I'm referring to any picture file, whether it be JPEG, uh, bitmap, or PNG, or any of the other files that it will accept. First thing we're going to do is insert an image. I've prepared one earlier. Um, and we'll have a look at what that is. So we just click on the image, click on the screen, you'll see this box appear. Double click on that, image location. Now you'll find that uh, all bitmaps have to be placed within the Mac, fold, uh, Mac 3 folder in the bitmap folder, and then you can just create your own folder for the screens that you're designing. So in this case, we'll open up the phone links one and we will insert this bitmap which was created in RealDraw at an earlier time. Now it's a bit small, um, so what we'll do is click original size, okay, and now we just drag it into position and you can uh, move it with the up and down arrow keys as well. Once you've got it where you want it, double click it and then click locked in position and then OK. You'll now notice that I'm clicking on it and trying to move it and it won't move. This is handy um, if you for when you're assigning other buttons and you want to move them and you want to select them uh, it'll stop it this screen you know this background from moving. But at the moment we've just got a bitmap which doesn't do very much even though it looks like it might. We'll assign some funks, uh, some buttons and place in a few drows and a display up here. So let's start with a button. We just click uh, image button and click it down here. Just get it roughly to the size of the button, the area that you want it. Um, doesn't have to be too accurate, just you know, roughly there. Double click on it and you can assign it a function. We, we want to start function for this one so we'll select the run and we'll press OK. You'll now notice that the button has become invisible except for this blue and green outline. That does not show in Mac itself, but it just gives you an idea of where the actual button is on the screen. Now, a quick way to make lots of buttons is just click on the original one you've made, go up to Edit, Copy, and then just press uh, Control V a few times, and you'll notice some more buttons appear. You can then assign them, or then place them over the other buttons that you want. Um, to place on your screen. Now you'll remember that I've assigned the function of start and so all of these buttons will be start until I change them. So for the stop button for example we don't want it to be the start or run function we want it to actually be the uh, stop and OK. Now that you'll have to do that with all these different, different buttons. You may find that some of the buttons uh, don't actually have a pre-written system function. Um, that's when you need to then select the OEM code function and assign the uh, appropriate OEM code. Um, I think you can find the OEM codes uh, in the wiki file in the Mac support section on the website. Um, what I tend to do is actually open another uh, screen designer with a pre with a screen uh, the original screen that Mac comes out with, and I check the codes that they're using for the functions and just copy them across. Um, unfortunately, you can't just uh, copy it uh, right click copy. You actually have to read it and then just punch it in manually. Let's now place some uh, digital readouts um, and see what happens there. Okay, so we select the DRO, place it on here, 
just get it roughly to the size that you want it and then place it over um, it's very hard to make a selection over the bitmap for some reason um, so you might have to fiddle around a bit once you got it to the size and position that you want it uh, just copy it again so we'll just uh, select copy and then control V and then just place them over the positions that you want okay so these are not yet assigned to these axes um, you can just click them double click them uh, system function well, this is the X one, so we'll go for X position. OK. Y position. OK. Z position. OK. And 4 or A position. OK. So that's some um, uh, digital readouts. Okay, once you've got your digital readouts in position, you can change uh, the background colours and all that um, to suit your design. Uh, if you go up to this colour selection icon up here and you click it, you'll notice uh, you've got you can change the different uh, colours. So for the dry background, when it's normal and unselected, well, in this instance, we'll make it black. Uh, for the dry numbers, obviously they don't want to be black. Uh, we'll we'll make them uh, electronic blue. I think we we'll call that electronic blue, or let's call that electronic blue. And the selected color when you're actually going to punch in some numbers, um, maybe it's just a little bit lighter than black. So we'll, we'll select that. And if I click that, you'll now notice this has changed. Unfortunately, uh, there's white lines that are displayed around the drows. Um, I think Art's going to remove that. He has in the past, but they seem to have appeared again, which doesn't really help with your design, but it's just something we've got to put up with in the meantime. The next thing we're going to do is place some LEDs on the screen. So you just select the LED button and click somewhere on the screen and resize the LED to suit your design and then just place it in position. You then double click on it, select the colors that you want, uh, red, green in this instance, and the system function, and it's an e-stop. LED so we'll collect uh, we'll select that one and OK you can place uh, LEDs all over the screen for to show basically to show the state of uh, the different buttons that have been selected and what's happening on the screen that's fairly straightforward the other straightforward thing is uh, putting a toolpath on um, there's not a lot of options with that other than placing it and um, just placing it. You'll notice that it, I can't select that corner very easily at all. That's a fix for art. There we go. And then just drag it in position. Um, this also has white outlines when it's displayed in Mac which will be going eventually. Um, now I think that's pretty much everything. You know, you can place G codes on uh, uh, can't be placed over a bitmap. It has to be placed off screen first and then placed into position. Obviously I haven't made a surround for this, but you've got the general idea anyway. I think that pretty much concludes how to get the screen running. 
uh, then it's just a matter of saving you press save as and well in this case we don't want you don't actually save the set into the bitmap folder so we'll go up two levels you save the set into the Mac 3 folder and we'll call we'll call it um, what's the project Chrome Linux F O A M L I N X and save next thing I'll do is I'll just open it up quickly in in Mac just to show you what it looks like okay so I've opened up Mac and to load the screen that we just worked on we go to view load screens uh, and you'll notice there's a few screens to pick from this is the one that we did in the just before and there it is and you'll notice that the buttons they, they're working um, they give the simulation of being pushed uh, you'll notice the drives moving etc I hope all this was uh, beneficial.